Hi everybody, welcome to part two of factoring. Okay, in this section we're going to look at factoring trinomials. That would be what? Polynomials with one, two, three terms. We're going to also look at those special forms that we looked at in multiplication of polynomials. Remember when we multiplied the conjugates? That's one word you might want to go back and review. And then we also had perfect square. We squared a binomial, right? Well, we're going to go back and look at the patterns of those and see if we can't use that to help making some of these factoring problems a lot easier. So here we go. Get your notebooks out, get your pencils, maybe even have a calculator handy. And here we go. Okay. Let's talk first about trinomials in quadratic form, okay? First, we're going to do this. We're going to let A, B, and C be real numbers, any real numbers, okay? And so here is the quadratic form, okay? We call it quadratic because the highest exponent on X is a square. So it's a second degree polynomial, in other words. We have an X squared term leave a little room there. We have a little x term there and then we're going to have a constant term. Okay? And so a, b, and c are just the numerical parts of that. We have a x squared plus b x plus c. Okay? So in the future when we get into something like the quadratic formula and we're solving say equations that have quadratic form we're going to want to be able to, you know, take out these coefficients and deal with them independently. For now, though, when we're factoring, we are wanting to look at the factors of A and C, see how they add up to B. A simple form of trinomial factoring where A is just 1, okay? So, simple factoring of trinomials... Since a is 1, we have x squared plus bx plus c. So you won't see a coefficient on x at first, okay? So let me show you how this will go, okay? You'll get an example similar to this. So here we are, x squared. We want to factor x squared plus 3x plus 2, okay? And so there's our directions. What you're going to do is our answer to our factoring of a trinomial in this quadratic form is going to be two binomials most of the time, okay? 99.9% .9 of the time, two binomials. So you want to have two sets of parentheses open somewhere down the line, if not next, okay? And for the simple factoring right away, really, now, right now, if you're confused with what I'm doing here, would be a good time for you to go review FOIL. Remember FOIL? Remember that FOIL was how we multiplied two binomials. It gave us the order that we multiplied the terms. Okay? So, this is a good time to go and review that because when we factor this trinomial, we're being asked to unfoil the trinomial, okay? So basically, that is what factoring is. Factoring a quadratic is unfoiling the, the multiplication of two binomials. So keep that in mind, okay? Okay, knowing that, now we can go and kind of think about it in this way. Let's talk about first. The first two things that I multiplied gave me this first x squared term. So x times x would have given me the first, right? If I'm thinking backwards, I'm undoing that foil. So x times x gave me the x squared. Okay, so you want to do that first if you can. Then go to the last. Go to the L. So we'll do that one next and keep it simple, especially if this is a prime number, okay? That's your last, okay? We'll get to the middle term in next, okay? 
So 2 times 1 had to multiply to give me 2, right? 1 times 2. It doesn't matter if you put 2 or 1 first at this point. Either way is fine. Okay, and now what you want to do is remember that before we got to this term, we had split the middle term. It, there was an O and an I that we had to combine, right? Remember, we combine like terms, okay? So go back and look at some of your multiplication problems, but look at them, kind of read the problem backwards so that you can see what I'm talking about, okay? So you had to combine like terms to get this 3x. And in this case, we would have combined a 1x and a 2x. You see that? Okay, so outer would have been 2x, right? Your outer multiplication and your inner multiplication would have been plus 1x. Both of them are positive. Notice that they would combine to give you that 3x. Now we're going to talk about factoring trinomials where the a coefficient on the front, our leading coefficient, is larger than 1, or let's just put it this way, it's not going to be just 1. So you'll see, actually see a number on the front of the x squared term. Okay, but before we get into that, I want to talk a little more about factoring completely. Factoring completely, here are the steps. First, you want to search for a GCF if you're given a polynomial. Search for a greatest common factor. Remember we talked about what the GCF is earlier. If you find one, again I'm going to say factor it out to the front of the polynomial. So remember these, for example, if I have 2x plus 6. Everyone pretty much can see that 2 is going to be the GCF. Pretty much always going to want to factor it out put it in the front, open that set of parentheses to put your leftovers. And I tell you to do it this way because what we're going to be doing in the next few steps is examining those leftovers a little closer. So here we are, step two. Once you get the GCF out to the front, you're going to look at that leftover portion in the parentheses. And what you're looking for would be a trinomial or a binomial that's factorable. So here's another quick example, okay? So here's one, and we're gonna have a special form here that you haven't quite seen yet, but bear with me, you'll get it in a bit. So let's say we have x cubed minus four x, okay? So step one was to find that GCF and bring it out to the front. If you look closely, they both have an x at least one x, right? So we're going to factor out the greatest common factor, the part, right? So we take that smallest exponent, so we're going to factor out the first power of x, okay? What's left over would be x squared minus a 4, okay? And so that's step one. Step two is when we're looking for a binomial or a trinomial that is factorable. What we're going to learn soon, okay, and today, in this video actually, is that this is what we'll call the difference of two squares. And here is how it, it factors out. Okay, so once you examine that leftover portion, right, in the parentheses, we do find in this one a binomial that is factorable. The difference of two squares factors in the into the conjugates of the square roots of the two terms. So the square roots are x and 2. So we'll have x plus 2, x minus 2. And then nothing else in here is factorable, so this would be your answer. You would continue to examine the leftovers or the, the factors that you found to be sure that there are no other steps you can take towards factoring it completely. In other words, you want all the factors that you've written out to be prime, right? Nothing else can be broken down. Okay, now we're going to factor the trinomials completely. You're going to see 
factoring completely as part of your of any, or some version of this in your directions from here on out. It just means that you want to have all parts, all factors of your factorization must be completely factored themselves. And as we go through examples, I'll bring that on a little more and it'll become apparent to you what I'm talking about. Let's talk about number A or letter A. Remember we said we wanted to set up the product of two binomials, empty parentheses. Okay, so that's what number one here is. Set up the product of two sets of parentheses. Of course, leave room for your two binomials. Okay, now we're going to proceed to unfoil. So that's what these next steps are. We're just unfoiling or unmultiplying, right? Factoring. Unfoiling. Okay, so find F, find the first, okay, of the multiplications. So remember, um, let me draw the lines that we had earlier, okay? We had first, outer, inner, and last. Okay, outer, inner, last. Now, we multiplied something to get Y squared, okay? So y squared would have been what? y times y. So we want to put y and y in for the first terms of the binomials. Okay, that makes sense. Now, last. Okay, last would be some factors of 6 that would combine to give me a negative 5. Now, mind you, the middle term is negative. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that when I went to combine the middle terms in the multiplication, I must have added two negative things. In addition to that, I'm saying that because also when I multiplied the two factors to get my last, right, the L in FOIL, when I multiplied those things, I must have multiplied two things with the same sign. Either I said negative times a negative to get me a positive, or a positive times a positive, right? Either way, whatever it was gave me a positive 6. So remember, okay, we could have multiplied to get a positive 6. Okay, positive 6 would have been a 2 times a 3 positive and a positive, right? Or what? A negative 2 times a negative 3 would also give me positive 6. So this would work. These would also add up to give me that negative 5 in the middle term. So that's what we're going to go with, the minus 2 and minus 3. I'm going to show you some sign patterns for these in a bit. It'll help make this easier. So what you have left to do now is just to check. Okay, remember this. It's very good advice for you guys to check your factorizations merely foil, foil it back up, okay? We check factoring, as we said before, by multiplying, okay? So we'll check what we have here, y minus two, y minus three. First, we have y squared, okay? Outer, minus three y, inner, minus two y. Okay, and last is negative two times negative three, Give me a positive 6, combine your middle terms, minus 5y, and everything checks out. It looks good. So y squared minus 5y plus 6. Excellent. Okay, great job, you guys. Let me put that plus back on that 6 up there. Okay, so there is our answer. We are correct by putting uh, y minus 2, y minus 3. So let me just go ahead and darken that up so we can have a good, solid answer. Okay, this is done. Okay, let's look at B. So we are doing here, this one, x squared plus 5x minus 14. So let's go ahead and set up our two sets of parentheses. Okay, and right away I can go ahead and do the first thing. I can say x squared is x times x. 
Now I just need to look at the factors of negative 14. Okay, now remember when you have a negative back here, you know you must have different signs, right? You must have multiplied a positive times a negative to make the signs different here. Okay, so let's talk about it. Okay, what are factors of 14? And if, it's, if they're different, we're going to be subtracting their absolute values, right? If they're different, we're looking for the difference of these factors to get the middle number, 5. So like, for example, 2 and 7, right? You want to list out lots of, you know, combinations of factors if you can. Okay, but 1 and 14 does not give me a 5, right? 2 and 7, however. So let's play with 2 and 7. Okay, so we will have a 2 and a 7 somehow. As far as the signs, where am I putting plus, where am I putting minus? Whatever this middle term has, whatever is on the 5x, which is what? We have a plus sign, right? So the plus will go on the larger number. Okay, this sign goes, when the signs are different, okay, this goes on the larger of the O and outer and inner. Okay, the larger of the outer and inner. Okay, I'll just put O and I. You should know what that means by now. Okay, so plus 7x minus 2x. So watch what happens there, okay? Let's take a look. We have for outer plus 7x, for inner minus 2x. These guys do combine to give me positive 5x, okay? So that's just messing with your outer and inner terms. It's simple, when this is, when a is just one, when there's really a one out in front of x squared, you're only having to mess with the factors of the last thing, okay? Making sure they add up to the middle. It's not so bad, because you can, this is what the, the most intense part is here. And you guys can remember outer and inner. I have faith in you, okay? So, um, I mean, really go practice multiplying up a bunch of binomials. If you want more practice with that, just check your work, right? We can check. We can check the x minus 2, x plus 7, right? We can check that by multiplying it and see if it gets to this original problem, right? So what is that? x squared outer is plus 7x minus 2x for inner minus 14. Combine your middle terms here, x squared plus 5x minus 14. And lo and behold, we have our original problem, the original trinomial. Okay, so good job, you guys. Let's move on to the next problem. Okay, so here's that problem with the factor completely. This is just kind of one way to look at it. Okay, factor completely. For this one, we have hints. Okay, so that was very nice of um, us to put that there. Okay, first, we're going to factor out the GCF. So factoring completely really just means go through all of your factoring steps. Once we're done with our lessons in factoring, I'm going to go back and I'm going to list out all of the steps, what you should do from point A to point Z, okay, from beginning to end. And what you're going to find out is in the beginning, you're wanting to have descending order, right? We want a standard form, right, from exponents on x should count down, right? Descending order of exponents. Okay, once you have that, the next thing for factoring is this. Factor out the GCF. You want to always check to make sure you can't factor out a GCF, okay? All right, so this is one of the first things you do. It is basically the first thing. Make sure there's no GCF. In this case now, Let's go ahead and put a 1 on this x, just to make the point. First, look at the numbers, the numerical part. First, GCF, okay? They all are divisible by 3. 3, 3, and 60 all have a factor of 3. So that will be the greatest common factor 
as far as the numerical, the numbers. What about the variable part? They all have x. We said earlier that we, when, when we are faced with finding the greatest common factor amongst terms where they all have that variable in common, we take the smallest exponent. You look at all the powers, right? All the degrees of the terms, and you look for the smallest one, in this case, x to the first power. And that's what you can factor out. That's your GCF for the x's. So in total, the final GCF that I can factor out or filter out of this trinomial will be 3x. So let's filter that out and get our leftovers, which I'm going to write a little bolder than this so we can factor it afterwards. So we're left with what? x squared, right? We're taking out the 3, we're taking out one of these x's, taking out this 3, one of these x's leaves me with a single x plus x. Now, minus 3 times what gave me 60? 3 times 20. Good. Awesome. Okay, so now what I have to do to factor completely is look at the leftover trinomial. Okay, you always look at the leftovers. I remember I said this is, that's what hangs off the very end of the problem. To see if you can factor this. And what we do for our final answer, you don't want to forget that 3x. You bring that down with you. So that just kind of comes down. And then in the next part of the problem, we work on this. Okay, this trinomial. Okay, so first we had x and x. Now, this should be simple enough. What are factors of 20 that give me positive 1? Now, we know that the signs in here must be different, right? These signs are different. Okay, we have plus and a negative somehow because when I multiply to get a negative 20, I must have multiplied a positive times a negative, right, to get a negative. Okay, so these signs must have been different. Okay, all right, so factors of 20 would that would give me a difference of one right five and four right because and also we can say that that positive 5x minus 4x would give me positive 1x these would be my middle terms my outer and inner so that's what i want these guys the outer and inner to work out to so doesn't matter which one you put first, you can put plus 5 and minus 4. Okay, the x's come from the multiplication, right? Po positive 5 times x, right? Plus 5x. And then the negative 4 times x is minus 4x. Okay, see that? How that works out? So when you start getting confused, just remember... Think about multiply. What did you multiply to get that? You know, you can kind of think of it backwards and forwards. It takes a little practice, but it is doable. Now, remember, you can always check your work by multiplying this back up. Okay, so how would we go about that? Okay, we would do that, of course, very carefully. Yes. So, wait, let me show you what to do to check this. We're we'll write it all out. Don't forget that 3x, okay? Okay, write it all out. Okay, and it doesn't matter which two things you multiply first. Just multiply them, okay? Two things. You could do the 3x first, but or you can do the binomials first, which is what we're going to do. So we're going to multiply that up. We're going to go backwards in the order. We're going to reverse the order we went in to get to the solution. So we have what? x squared. Bring your 3x down. x squared, what? Minus 4x plus 5x, that's plus x. Then minus 20. Good, we got that. Now we're going to distribute the 3x back into the problem. Let's see what we get. 3x cubed, 3x squared. Watch your x's, watch your signs, of course. Watch the exponents you end up with on x, okay? So x times x squared is x cubed. x times x is 
put your 3x squared. And then, of course, 3 times negative 20 is negative 60. And we tack our x on there, right? So we're multiplying an x as well. So is this the same as my original problem? It sure is. And good job, you guys. Okay, so from this point, you guys need to start practicing a little bit. Okay, get in that homework book. Do some of these problems, okay? We're about to take it up a notch in about a minute. Okay, so if you want to pause the video at this point and just practice some of these problems, um, this might be a good time to do that. Just practice for about 10 minutes, practice a couple of them, and come back to the video. Okay, you guys, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, we're going to talk about the box method for factoring trinomials. Okay, and this will work with any trinomial that is in that standard form of ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, so we're going to combine this box method with something called the ac method, where we'll take a and c and we'll multiply them. Okay, so whatever this ends up being, we're going to be looking for factors of a times c that would combine to give me b. But um, we'll talk about that in a sec. Let's look at this and learn it through lots of good examples. In the box method, what we're going to do is we're going to take the first term, x squared here, and we're going to put it in this first box, the top left. And the, we'll take c, that last term, and we're going to put it down the lower right hand corner. So this is always what we start by doing with the box method. Okay. And we're going to do, on the side, this a times c thing, okay? So a is, in this case, 1. So we want 1 times a negative 6, which gives us what? Negative 6. Okay, so let's look at factors, meaning what two things multiply to give us negative 6, right? We could have 1, or let's say 1, negative 1 times 6. We could have um, positive 1 times negative 6. Okay, we can have 2 times negative 3, negative 2 times positive 3. Okay, I think we found our two contenders. Let's take a look at po negative 2 and positive 3. Okay, if we would have our two center terms as negative 2x plus 3x, these two things would give me a positive 1x, right? And look at what our middle term is. That's what we're trying to make happen. So once we find these factors, we found the terms that we want to put in the empty boxes here, okay? So we want to put and it doesn't matter which one you put. You can put the 3x up here or whatever. So we're going to put the minus 2x in one of the boxes and the positive 3x in the other box. Okay? So again, I'm telling you, you can put the positive 3x here and um, you could put the negative 2x down here if you like. Um, it'll work out the same. Okay? So what we do next is we're going to factor this row, okay? So we'll factor this little grouping, I guess you can call it a grouping. What comes out of that grouping would be what? x squared and negative 2x have an x in common, okay? So we want to look for the GCP, the greatest, com G the greatest common factor, GCF, excuse me, the GCF of the rows and then of course the columns are next. But from the second row here, we have a 3 in common, right? 3x minus 6, if it were its own standalone problem, we would factor out a 3. So you just want to write the GCF out here. Now notice this, the box touching where I'm going to write this term. This is a positive value, so this is going to be a positive value. Notice x squared is a positive term, so the x is a positive term. Okay, we're going to kind of go upward here and find the GCF of the columns now, okay? 
So out of x squared and 3x, right? x squared and 3x, they have an x in common. So we'll write a positive x there. And in positive because the x squared term itself is positive. Let me clean this box up a little bit. Okay, and then from the second column, negative 2x and negative 6 have what in common? And they're both negative. We're going to bring that negative 2 out there. So we'll write a minus 2 here. Okay, and this 3 is positive, so this will be a plus. Okay, now what you get out here in these outer rim here is would be the two binomials that this factors into, and we'll check it in a sec, okay? So we'll have x minus 2, x plus 3. Let's go ahead and check this by foiling it, okay? Now put that there, and so let's check. Okay, check x minus 2, x plus 3. I'm below the box there. F foil is what? x squared outer plus 3x inner minus 2x and last is negative 6. Combine your two center terms 3 minus 2 x squared so that makes plus x and then minus 6 so it checks. This box method is priceless you guys. I think the more the worst part of it is the AC part but you would have to do the AC method scratch work part regardless. Okay, this is one of the most important parts of factoring trinomials. If you can get this AC method, finding factors of this number that combine to give the center term, the center number, then um, you're in good shape if you can get this part. This is where it takes a little practice. Let's try this on B, okay? So we'll have our little two by two table. Okay, let's make our box. And then we're going to start by putting in the 2x, or in this case it's 2y squared. Give me a little more room there. 2y squared, and then the last term of plus 1 there, okay? So you always start by putting the first and the last terms in that top corner, and then the bottom right corner. And so now we want to go figure out what these other boxes are going to be by using the AC method, okay? A times C. So let's bring that out over here. A times C, in this case, is 2. Now factors of 2, that would combine to give me a negative 3. Now check it out. Because I have a positive 1 here, I must have multiplied to get the positive 1 last multiplication in FOIL, L in FOIL. I could have multiplied two positive numbers or two negatives. But since the middle term is negative, we're looking for two negative factors, okay? In other words, and two is prime, so we're going to have, and the only factors of two could be positive one, positive two, or negative one, negative two, right? Multiply those things and you get a positive two. Since we have a negative three y, we're going to choose the negative values. So note that in the center term of FOIL, if I had a negative 1y minus 2y, notice these two guys would combine to give me negative 3y. So that's what I need to put in those other boxes, okay? I need a minus y and a minus 2y. Remember, minus y is minus 1y. So you could put the 1 if it helps. Please do put it if you need it. It's okay. Okay, now we're going to find the GCF of the rows and the columns, okay? Just like we did before. These two guys have what in common? They have a Y in common, right? So we'll bring out this Y. Now from the second row here, negative 2Y and 1. What is in common? They have a 1 in common, but I want you to notice that the box touching the 1 is a negative value, so this will be a negative 1. Okay? If whatever box is closest to that value that you're writing out outside of the box in the outer rim, 
that is going to dictate the sign of what number ends up in your binomial. Now let's get this first column. Okay, so we're coming up here to this first column. Okay, now what do they have in common? They have a 2 and a y. So we're needing a 2y. And notice that this is positive because the box closest to that value is positive. Now, Notice this next one is going to be a negative value because this box contains a negative. The one closest to it is minus or negative, so this is going to be negative. And notice that we have what? We have just one in common, right? And that's what we'll write. So if you're seeing, say you wrote negative y and 1, or you don't see anything in common, Remember, they could have a negative one or a positive one in common. So let's go ahead and write this out. Remember, you always can check it, right? You can always check and make some adjustments when you check using the FOIL method, right? Let me go ahead and move this stuff here, the AC stuff from this problem, so we have a little room. So let's go ahead and uh, write what we have there. Let's write what we have. We have 2y minus 1 times y minus 1, okay, and we can go ahead and do a check right underneath it, okay, well, I'll check it right here, by foiling, right, the foil multiplying back up will give us the check for factoring, so first we have what, 2y squared, outer, minus 2y, inner, minus 1y, and last, negative times negative is positive 1. Okay, put your equal sign between each step. Now we have 2y squared. Now combine these center terms to get negative 3y and then plus 1. Did we get it right? Compare it to this original problem, the original trinomial, and we sure did. We did a good job. You guys are doing great. Hang in there, okay? Why don't you guys pause the video and give these two things a shot. Remember factoring completely. Remember talking about needing a positive leading coefficient for D. I'm looking at D for that one. So the steps all together of factoring, right? Just to remind you, steps would be first, we want to factor out a GCF. Okay, so first we factor the GCF out to the front. Then we look at the leftovers, right? And we examine them to see what type of trinomial it is. We want to make sure the leftovers are or are not factorable. So that's just a quick little reminder. Right offhand, C doesn't look too nice, I guess. But if we look at 12, 15, and 3, they have is a 3 in common, and they all have a single Y. So let's filter out that 3y and see what comes of it. So if we take a 3y from the first term, we're ending up with, what, 4x squared. From the second term, we end up with, what, 5x. And from the last term, we end up with plus 1, right? Remember, when you factor out, it's sort of like you're dividing everything by the 3y or whatever you're trying to factor out. And something over itself is 1. Okay, all right, so now the leftovers of this problem, right, this trinomial in the parentheses here is something that we can work on now. Now we're going to factor this. Okay, so let's give it a try. Okay, so now let's go ahead and carry down an extra step, okay, and this is what we're looking for. We're going to have something to this effect in the end, okay, let's do the box method down here. So here is our box. You don't have to draw a perfect box, you guys. You just have to draw something that you can work with. So we want that first term and the last term, right? First box and last box. So 4x squared and positive 1. Okay. Now let's look for factors. There's the AC method. 4 times 1 is 4. So what are factors of 4? That would combine to give me 5. 
That should be fairly easy, right? 4, we have 1 times 4, 2 times 2. Stop me if we got it. We do, right? 1 and 4, so look, 1x plus 4x. Everything's plus in that trinomial, so we know we have two positive terms. These two things would give me that 5x I need. So I'm going to go ahead and put a 4x and a 1x, all right? You can just put x, too. That's fine. Remember, there is a 1 in front of there that is understood. Now let's go ahead and find the GCF of the columns and the rows, and we'll be home free. Now this first, first row would have, what, 4 and x, right? That's the GCF of this first row. Now, from this second row there, what's in common? X and 1 up for, up at first look like they have nothing in common, but remember, these guys do have that 1 in common. Now, from the first column here, 4x squared and x have an x in common, right? That greatest common factor of them would be x. Okay. Okay, so now 4x and 1, 4x and 1 would have a 1 in common. Now let's fill in our binomials and check it. Okay, remember these guys are our binomials, the, the outer rim that we just wrote. So we have a 4x plus 1, and we have an x plus 1. Okay, let's check it. We can just check it right below here. So what first would be 4x squared, outer would be plus 4x, inner is 1x, and last is positive 1. Of course, combine your center terms, and we have 4x squared plus 5x plus 1. Looks good, you guys. We got that original trinomial. And it looks like none of the leftovers or none of the individual factors can be broken down any further. So this would be my solution. Okay? So here's your solution there. All right, let's go to part D. So to D, we have a negative leading coefficient, right? We prefer... Okay, a positive leading coefficient. So what we're going to do is we can say we're factoring out a negative, right? Or we're taking the opposite of everything. Really what you're doing is factoring out a negative 1. But we don't write that 1. What we're going to do is we're going to bring down a negative and open a set of parentheses, okay? So now we take the opposite. So we'll have a positive 6x squared, a plus x, and a minus 2. Now we have the positive leading coefficient that we need. Remember, when you write your answer, you want to carry down that negative along with your two binomials, okay? Don't forget about the GCFs that you factor out to the front. So let's do the box method here. We'll, we'll actually do this to the right a little bit, okay? So here's my little box here, okay? box method, we have 6x squared and a negative 2. Now what are factors of what? A times C. Factors of 12, that would combine to give me a positive 1. And I'm not really concerning myself with the sign on the negative 2 so much as I'm concerning myself with the fact that I had to multiply two different signs to get a negative. Okay? And so when we find those factors of 12, the larger of the two numbers will have this sign, okay? Check it out. We're going to have a 4x and we're going to have a 3x. Now, one of these has to be negative and one of these has to be positive. So the larger of the two would be the, this sign, the sign in the middle term. So plus 4x and minus 3x would combine to give me positive 1x. Okay, so that's what you're putting in those outer boxes, right? We want a 4x and a negative 3x. Now let's write our GCFs, okay? So we're going to have a 3x plus 2 
and a 2x minus 1. So now let's check this by foiling, okay? So here we are. First would be what? Let me put the check here. 6x squared. What outer is minus 3x? Okay, inner is positive 4x, and last is minus 2. Okay, so combine those center terms, and you have 6x squared plus x minus 2. And looking good, you guys. Okay, so important to know how to check. So this part of our um, lesson is going to begin with just a little review of some products of special forms, okay? Because when we factor, we're undoing multiplication. I needed to remind you guys of some multiplication um, special cases that we learned recently. So let's just look at a couple examples and then we'll get into the factoring part. Okay, so these examples of the directions are simply to multiply, okay? And so what I have in A here, okay, part A, is the multiplication, right, the product of two conjugates. And if you guys will remember, think back, conjugates are just the sum, right, and the difference of the same two terms. See, I have 2x and 3 in both of these. One's adding 2x and 3, the other one's subtracting 2x and 3. So that's what's going on here. So we are tasked with just multiplying these guys okay so let's go for it okay so we'll foil I'll just go for it with the foil okay and so first would be 4x squared right 2x and 2x outer is going to be negative 3 times 2x right so minus 6x inner is going to be positive 6x now this is important, even though that's about to cancel, it's important. Now we have the 3 times negative 3, and that would be minus 9, okay? Notice a couple of things, okay? Notice that these guys are all going to cancel. That's an important idea, but they were once there. I want you to remember that too, okay? And what we end up with would be 4x squared, which is a perfect square in itself, right? And we end up with subtraction of another perfect square. So here you go. Catch my drift here. This is 2x being squared, right? And the 9 would be a 3 being squared. If you're not recognizing perfect squares yet, you need to practice that, okay? Okay. So perfect squares, remember this also. If you look at the top center part of where I can write, okay? Just kind of note this, okay? This is an exponent rule that you'll need to kind of remember sometimes. Anytime, anytime I have a, an even number exponent, any even number exponent, a power, right? If I'm raised, raising anything to an even number, anything divisible by 2, it can be a perfect square. Here's how. Okay, it's as easy as this. If you can divide by 2, okay, if you know how to divide by 2, and you all can do that, then you can do this skill. You can rewrite something with an even exponent, like x to the 4th, x to the 6th, etc. You can do this. Not a bad skill to, to know you know it's very handy to know so here's how this goes okay so it is like this okay so let's say I have u to the 2n 2n just meaning that's an even number it's 2 times some number right even 2 times 1 makes 2 so what you would do is you would write u to the n and put the square outside, put the, the factor of 2 outside. Now look, what do I have here? This is a factor, I mean, excuse me, an exponent raised to an exponent, right? When I have a power raised to another power, I multiply, so 2 times n. So remember, these rules, the exponent rules, you can take them in either direction, okay? And I'll give you an example in a sec, okay? 
what we'll do is we'll hold this in our toolbox for now okay so do not forget this and okay, we're going to come back to that in a sec okay now let's go back to our our current example the 4x squared minus 9 we're on a here okay so we've just finished factoring the sum I mean excuse me multiplying the sum and the difference of the same two terms what this is going to end up being in factoring in terms of factoring this is the problem you would be given and you'd be told to factor it and you would recognize that there's the difference this must be subtraction between two perfect squares and then of course you would take it backwards into the two conjugates the conjugate of the square roots okay I have example after example coming up very soon okay let's go to B I want to multiply now though now on B I have a binomial squared I go, went ahead and used one of the same binomials I had in the previous problem and that's fine so here we are on B okay and so what a lot of you might want to do is go ahead and write it out okay if it's squared right whatever we're squaring we're multiplying times itself right write it out just as it is you don't have to change anything right it is the same thing multiplied times itself okay so this is a little different from the previous problem in that there are two subtractions right it's going to be the same operation between the two terms so let's go ahead and foil this one out and we'll end up with first 4x squared outer is going to be negative 6x inner negative 6x so you get the same two terms right these guys match or we'll say we get two of the same thing the same term okay all right and then last we get what negative three times negative three I'm multiplying the same sign so I'll get plus nine so let's go ahead and simplify this okay let me go ahead and make a little room for that no, remember that's two of the same right that's a very important part so let's go ahead and finish this up we'll have 4x squared minus 12x right plus 9 now note a couple of things okay if something's going to carry backwards into factoring into a binomial squared two a few couple of situations have to happen okay and let me turn to change to the gray okay two things have to happen okay the first and last terms must be squares right perfect squares okay and then this middle term must be twice the square root of the first and last right so this one has to be twice the square root of 4x 2x times square root of 9 is 3 so is it that let's take that over the side 2 times 2x and times 3 so look I'm gonna go ahead and just take two things at a time and multiply them right I'll have 4x times 3 okay is 12x and lo and behold it is now the good news is factoring a perfect square trinomial you can use the box method with that and so it's not as big a deal as recognizing the difference of two squares let's get into just the formula there are formulas that you can use the first formula special form difference of two squares okay would be the difference right it must be the difference okay subtraction between two perfect squared values then you can do the conjugates right the sum and the difference of their roots okay now perfect square trinomials okay as we said you would recognize that you have these perfect square front and back right so this is a perfect square all right and off the back we have a perfect square okay 
and then in the middle so we want to know what the roots of u squared right the square root would be u and for v squared we'd have v so this would be twice their square roots right so this is two times the square root of the u squared and the v squared okay that's not so bad okay and then of course there is another version of this okay as we saw in the previous example okay so check this out okay we can have two plus signs which would mean that I have a plus sign in my square right in the factorization the other pattern that has two of the same would be this one if I scroll down ouch okay here u squared minus 2v uv plus v squared okay again you still have that twice those square roots right you begin you begin and you end with perfect squares these this is a pattern if you have subtraction and then addition inside of your trinomial okay if the last term is positive and the center term is subtraction then your factorization typically would be something minus okay something and then something minus something in other words you have two subtractions okay if this is the pattern in your trinomial now before I begin the examples for this next section I want you to remember what we started out earlier talking about your even exponents okay so if you have a, something raised to an even power right say an exponent that's a 6 or a 4 okay you can rewrite an even exponent now remember we can represent an even exponent as 2 times n right 2 times a number any even number is 2 times something right so if we have u to the 2n that's our even number we can rewrite this as a perfect square by writing u to the n right whatever that number is that's multiplied times 2 and then outside of parentheses squared okay now a little example just to kind of give you um, a, a little extra view of what I'm talking about if I have x to the uh, let's say 6 power I can rewrite this as something squared right x to the third power squared because I have there is the exponent rule that says if I raise a power to another power I multiply those exponents right m times n it's because of this rule of exponents we can rewrite these even numbered exponents as perfect squares so keep that kind of handy okay hold that thought in other words factor completely this set of polynomials okay and we have quite a few examples here so now the first thing we're supposed to do when we are factoring completely is we would like to have the polynomial in descending order right we want our exponents written from largest to smallest okay standard form and we have that here we want to look for a GCF is there a GCF they both have two and they both have at least one a so we'll factor out 2a and write our leftovers here in parentheses now when we filter it out of each term just kind of um, remember that we're really taking each term and we're just kind of dividing it by that number that we're that they have in common right so in this case notice we have an a squared left right so a squared in the second term we have minus one okay so it's not nothing remember that 2a divided by itself is actually one right okay so keep that in mind now what we have here is the difference right difference is subtraction and look here one is a perfect squared 
okay? One can be a perfect cube, perfect whatever you need it to be. It's just a good number to see in a problem. Okay, so we have the difference of the two squares. So let's factor that. We want to bring down what we've already factored out, right? You just carry that 2a down. Open up two sets of parentheses afterwards. We'll have the sum and the difference of these roots. We have a and 1, a and 1. Conjugates, right? Nothing else in here can be factored. Everything is pretty much broken down into its most prime form. Good job. Okay. So the next problem, let's take a look at this. We do have beginning and end, right? We have perfect square factors, right? We have perfect square here, right? And right, right on top, and 9, right, is a perfect square. So 25 is, what, 5? And we can put the x in there, too. 5x is being squared here, and 3 is being squared here. Now, what other part of the pattern do we need to look for? Well, we need these guys, right? We want these roots, that 5x and that 3. In the middle, we need to see, what, twice these, the product of that 3 and that 5x. 2 times 3 times 5x. And is that what we have there? It sure is, right? It's twice 15x. So this is a perfect square trinomial, okay? So we factor that how? It goes into what? We'll have two plus signs, right? So we'll do what? The root 5x and the other root 3 squared, right? Now the good news is the box method would work for this. If you wanted to do the box method, okay, on this one, you would, what, you start with 25x here, x squared, excuse me, and the 9 down here. And then you look for factors of 25 times 9, right, 225. You want the factors of 225 that would add to give me a 30. Now, once you go through these, look, 5 times 45, 9 times 25, we would come to 15 times 15, right? Now look, 15x plus 15x, okay, would give me 30x. So we want a 15x and a 15x. That's what we're splitting that center term into. Now we'll fact find that common factor, the greatest common factor of the rows and the columns. So first row. Okay, so first row is 25x squared and 15x, right? These guys have what in common? They have a 5 and an x. Okay? In the second row, what do 15x and 9 have in common? These guys have what? A 3. And it's positive because the box on the closest box to that factor is going to be positive, making it positive. Now, first column. Okay, I'll use green for this one. I'm looking at this first column up and down, right? 25x squared and 15x have a 5x in common. And of course, 15 and 9, again, they have 3 in common. Notice the, fir the same thing happened for both of these. Okay, so now let's look at C, part C here. Now, we have an a squared. I just want to notice, just point a couple things out. We have two variables in here. There's an a and a b. They're both squared. Okay, so we can't factor out to the front any variable, but the numerical portion of this, maybe we can do something with that. So equal 5 and 45, of course, their GCF would be 5. So let's start there. If I filter out the 5, I'll have an a squared minus, now 45 divided by 5 is 9, and then b squared is the same. Now, in the parentheses, what do we have here? Okay, what would a squared minus 9 
B squared B. Do, 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 when you think about it, the difference of two squares. Now you can tell when my videos are getting kind of long because then I'm just like my sense of humor is kicking in. Sorry, you guys. Here we go now. The difference of two perfect squares. Nine is what? Three squared. Of course, B is being squared, right? And then they have an A being squared. I do this little thing where I put what's being squared inside of the parentheses so I can kind of easily grab the roots. And these are the numbers that will go into my two sets of parentheses in my factorization. Check it out. Now, of course, I'm bringing my 5 down, right? That's this guy. I've already factored him out to the front. Two sets of parentheses, and we'll have the sum and the difference of the square roots, right? A and 3B. A, 3B. Right? Now, here's the secret uh, later on down the line. The reason, personally, that this is up to, this is just my reason for putting plus and then subtraction, right? Addition and then subtraction off the end. If we were going to be able to factor a binomial, a two-termed item, any further, it would have to be the difference of two squares or the sum and difference of cubes, which we'll get to in another video. But those are the only things. And now, the sum and difference of cubes, those are rare things, okay? That's kind of not as important as, as the difference of two squares. If you're going to have to factor completely multiple steps as far as these binomials here are concerned, the, what would have to be factored again in another step would show up with the subtraction, right? Because it's the difference of two perfect squares. Here's why I'm saying this. If you end up with the sum, okay, this is just something you got to make a note of. You need to know in case you haven't heard it yet. The sum of two perfect squares is prime. You can't break that down. That's just for the sum of two perfect squares as opposed to the difference, which is subtraction. So remember that. And by saying a prime, I mean it cannot be factored any further. I mean, any prime polynomial is already in its most factored form. All right, example D. Now, this one is a little deceptive in how it looks. If you look at part D here, example D, notice we have a perfect squared um, in the front, in our first term. But when you explore a little further, you'll notice that our constant term is not a square. Okay? Okay? So this one could be deceiving. You could just be very careful. This will not become 5a plus 3 squared. Okay? This is not the way this one will work. This one you'll have to use the box method or AC method. Okay? And the good news, you guys, is if you're having trouble identifying the perfect square trinomials, I'm just reminding you that the box method or AC method is, is how we, we can call it, what we call that usual uh, method that we use to factor any trinomial in standard form. Uh, it can be used to factor the, the perfect square trinomials. So even if you can't recognize them anyway, you can still use the, the method we used in the last part, okay? You don't really have to recognize them. They will work themselves out, okay? It's the difference of two squares, though, because it's a binomial. That's what you really need to recognize. Okay, so let's do the box method. Let's make our box here. Okay, in the first top left, we'll have 25a squared. Bottom right, we got 3. Now, a times c, of course, is 75, right? 25 times 3. And so we want factors of 75. And the signs are going to be the same, and they're both going to be addition, right? So we're, that's a good one. We're all plus here. So we want them to add up to 20. So let's begin, okay? 75, we would, of course, have 1 and 75. That do, those do not add up to 20. 
2 doesn't go into 75. How about 3? 3 times 25. That would give us 28. Try 4. Does 4 go? No. How about 5? We would have 5 times 15. Look at that now. 5 and 15 do add to give me 20, right? Of course, we would say it this way. 5x plus 15x would combine to give me 20x, which is the middle term. That's what we're after with all of this, right? So now I'm going to put the 15 and x and the 5x in the other boxes that were empty. Okay, the remaining boxes of my little 2x2 two two table. Okay, now this is the part where we will write the GCFs out, right? We want to come out here with the GCF of this row and this row. And then we'll come up here with the GCF, the greatest common factor of the columns. Okay, so let's start with the rows. If you look at the first row, 25a squared and 15x, excuse me, a, I know I put x's, I should put a's. So what is in common there, okay? Again, this should be a, okay. So now we have what, 5a, and from the for second column, 5a and 3 have a 1 in common, right? If you, you look at them, you think they have nothing in common, just put a 1 right okay and now uh, what's next now we're going to do the columns right 25 a squared and 5 a okay what do they have in common what would we factor out right if we were actually factoring it out we're gonna write that greatest common factor down these guys would have a 5 a okay and then 15 a and 3 do have that 3 in common Okay, so that's pretty great. Okay, so you can see there it's not going to work out as a perfect square trinomial at all, but it's going to work out very well if you know how to do your box method. These are my two binomials, remember? So let's go there now. Let's write down what we have. So we have for our answer, let me move this over for you, we would get a 5a plus 3 <laughs> and my pen is not cooperating a 5a plus 1 okay okay and there you have it okay 5a plus 3 5a plus 1 okay so now, uh, let's go on to part E, okay? Now, part E, let's take a look, really good close look at this one now. The first two, the first term, and the third term, the very last thing. These are perfect squares, right? This is 2x being squared, and this one is 3 being squared. Now, how can I tell if it's a perfect square trinomial? I want to take that 2x times that 3 and double it, right? So this is the doubling of, I'll just write the second one first, three times two x, right? We want to see if there are two of those, okay? And the signs, don't worry so much about the signs, but two times six x, and it is 12 x, right? So this checks out as a perfect square trinomial. So as long as you are aware of how the sign patterns go, if this middle term is subtraction, then in your binomials, you'll have a subtraction. And just, so you just take the square roots of the first and last and square it. That's it. That's how it goes. That is us fitting it into the pattern. Remember those patterns. Okay. And here they are, right? If Notice the last term will always be pos positive because you're multiplying the same thing. A negative times a negative gives you a positive, or a positive times a positive gives you positive. So that's okay. You want that one to be positive, the very last, the second sign that you see, the second operation. But the middle term, though, see this one here. This one, um, if you have a situation where it's perfect square, the sign that's going to end up inside 
of your factorization is determined by whatever the sign of that middle term is, okay? See that? If everything else fits as far as your perfect square trinomial pattern, that's how you get your sign, in case anyone is still confused about that. Okay, now let's move on to F. Okay, so part F looks like we have descending order. We do not like this here. We don't like this positive, this negative leading coefficient, as well as they all have a 2, okay? So um, we want to definitely factor out a negative value and definitely the GCF of 2. So let's see what happens. Filtering that out, we'll have x squared plus 6x, because we're factoring out a negative. This will change as well, right? Minus 18 becomes plus 9. So what do we have here? We have a perfect square in the front and in the back, right? The, the engine and the caboose have to be perfect squares for those trinomials. So let's see what we have. We have an x, of course, being squared, and we have a 3. That's squared. Now, the middle term would have to be twice 3 and x. So is it? It sure is. It's 6x. So we have a perfect square trinomial, and the signs are plus. Take the, the square roots, right? That x and that 3, the things that are being squared, right? And we'll put them inside the parentheses with the square outside. All right, and this is the answer there. Okay, part G. Example G. Remember what I said earlier about even exponents. I said that if we have an even exponent, right, 2 to the n is an even number, right? Even integer. Okay, because an even number is divisible by 2, we can write it as 2 times any other, some number, okay? So if this is the case, then we can rewrite as this. If we have any even number on here, then we can rewrite it as, you want to figure out what is that number. Is it 2 times what gives you that, that exponent? So you'll put u to the what, and then outside of that, in parentheses, you put your square. So u to the n is being squared. So y to the fourth, we can write that as what? We can write it as y to some power squared, right? Well, y squared is being squared. Now this is part of that perfect square, right? The outside two, right here, okay? Okay, so something is being squared, right? Difference. And then, of course, what is being squared? Let me make that whole pattern here. A perfect square, a perfect square. This will be 9 being squared is what 81 is. Okay. So how does this factor? Open your two sets of parentheses. Remember, it's going to be the sum and the difference, the conjugates. What I have here in blue is the root that we bring down into the factorization. So y to the fourth became y squared squared. So it actually y squared becomes part of our factorization. Now 9 is the root of 81. Remember what your original problem was. Okay, don't forget that. Okay, now we want to take a look at what we have here. We have the difference of two squares factored into conjugates for y squared and 9. Now, take a look at your leftovers, okay? Remember we said that addition between two perfect squares is prime, right? Remember we just said that. So, stop for that one. This is done. However, the difference of two squares is a total green light, right? This one is a difference of two squares, and we can take this another step. Okay, so we bring down the part that's prime. The y squared plus 9 just gets brought down. And so y squared minus 9, however, can be broken down. So we'll have the addition and subtraction. Again, conjugates. 
what is being squared here, right? So right here we have what? y squared, of course, and then 9 would be 3 squared. So y and 3 are the roots that you bring down into this new factorization. Okay, so now again, like I said, look at your leftovers. Remember, additions of in binomials typically, unless they're cubes, are not going to factor any further. And, but subtraction, you really want to examine the difference, the subtraction. Make sure you don't have perfect squares. Okay, this one, however, is done. Suppose we have a square that has an area of 9x squared plus 24x plus 16 square feet. In that case, then what would its side length be? Remember that squares have the same side length, right? There are four of those same side measurements. And um, to find the area of a square, remember that we merely need to square the side, right? Or multiply side times side. So what would we like for this trinomial to look like, right? So we're looking for factors of this. This is the area, okay? 9x squared plus 24x plus 16. Okay, and we'll leave the units for afterwards, okay? So I would love for this to be a perfect square trinomial. Let's see if it works out that way, okay? First of all, first of all, let's figure out what's being squared, okay? In the first term here, 9x squared is what? Being squared. 3 is squared and x, correct? You agree? Good. 16 then is also something that is a perfect square and it's actually 4 squared. Now remember, for this to fit the pattern for our perfect square trinomial, this middle has to be twice the product of these roots, right? So we want the 4 times the 3x, right? Or what? Twice 12. And it does work out. Okay, so what does that mean for us? That means that when we go to factor this, it's going to work out really nicely. It's going to look like this. The factorization of this trinomial will be these roots, right? And the signs are going to be addition, right? 3x plus 4 in this parentheses here. 3x plus 4. And you can just write it squared. And we're done. That means that the side length, right? Remember, this was side squared, right, for our area. So what this means is one of these sides would measure 3x plus 4 feet. Okay, and you are done. You guys have a great afternoon. Hope you're having a good time uh, this week. And be in touch with me if you need some help with any of your skills. I'm here. Take care.